Good morning, church. Today's devotional is based on a booklet by Pastor Carl Stevens uh, titled, How Does God Measure Your Life? Pastor Carl Stevens was the founding pastor of Greater Grace Church. So measuring is such a common activity right from our childhood. A foot is 12 inches, a yard, three feet, and so on. Science is the measure of cause and effects. But there are measures that go beyond the measure of men. For instance, a scientist could make a chemical analysis of a mother's tear. Yet a tear of a mother is far more than the ingredients that comprise it like phosphates, the sodium. There is no power on earth to measure such a tear. So what kind of measuring line do we use for ourselves, for our own lives? How do we measure our lives? Is it measured by how many sales we made last week? Is it measured by how many trials and temptations we had? Is it measured by how much of sickness our family went through? Is it measured by how many times we failed? Is it measured by how many times people have disappointed us, insulted us, hurt us? Is our heart measured by the guilt or Satan's accusation? We should not be measuring ourselves with ourselves. Neither we should be measuring ourselves with what people do to us or what people say. Rather, our focus should be to see how God measures our life. God has a divine measuring line. It is his super abundant grace, his inexhaustible mercy and his incomprehensible love. Our forgiveness is measured by the precious blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. We are not measured by our past or by what people did to us. Our measuring line is not our weakness or frailty or vulnerability. It is not the circumstances, the sickness, marriage or finances. From eternity past to eternity future, God sees us as perfect because of his measuring line of omniscience and foreknowledge. As vessels, we are measured by how much we are prepared for our master's use. So after knowing this, how should we measure our lives? Our measure should be based purely on the word of God. And that is because of the word, we will be in a position to to be careful stewards of God's grace and to measure where we are in our Christian walk. So because of his word, we can so readily measure things as God sees them. The first way we are measured is by how much we receive God's love and grace. Our lives are measured by the filling of the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are measured by God's mandate and mercy. Our faith is measured by believing his word. A hunger for God is measured by our commitment to receive his word with meekness. A love for God is measured by our response to the free and limitless love of God given in Jesus Christ. It is measured by our commitment to grace, by our obedience to God's mandate. Our convictions are measured by how much it stems from the purity of God's word. Our words are measured by how much we edify the people we meet. And how should we measure other people then? Other people are not measured by their present status. They are to be measured by they aren't to be measured by their weaknesses. We have to measure people by God's love for them. They are to be measured by what they will become by the grace of God. They must be seen for what they are going to be by how they are growing in Christ. And the word of God should always be our measure because only through the word we know how God measures us as we learn what God wants us to do and how to receive the power to obey him. Then we will know how to please God. And there are four good ways to learn more about how to please God through our lives. The first one is to imitate Christ. If we want to know how to please God, then we must tune ourselves to Lord Jesus Christ and read about what he loves and what he hates. For example, 
we should know that he hates Satan, he hates sin, he hates rebellion and impurity, he hates the lawlessness and evil. And what does he love? He came to serve. His, that was his purpose, to give his life as ransom for many. This is how he measured his life. Jesus said the chiefest among us would be those who serve. And the greatest people in the world today are those who measure their opportunities by serving others in love. So to imitate Christ is a great way to please God. The second way is to keep his commandments. So if I love God, his commandments are not difficult and love makes obeying them so easy. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of Father is not in him. We are commanded to love one another, to forgive. We are commanded to share the gospel to the world. So by obedience, we please him. There is another way, learning from the request and prayers of Christ. Once we know what the prayers of Jesus were, uh, we see that in the Gospels, we, we can know what his heart was for. For example, the Lord requests us that by our mercies, we present our bodies as living sacrifice to him, Romans 12.1. Or in Proverbs 4.23, he asks us to guard our heart with all due diligence. If I want to know about Christ, I must learn the request and prayers of Christ. He wants to be uh, me to be one with the body. John 17, 21, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 says, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. So he wants the marriage and the family to be one, revealing the unity of Trinity. So to please God, we should learn the, from the request and the prayers of Christ. The fourth way uh, can be to know his promises and know what God wants. For example, I can read his promises and know what he wants. Jeremiah 13, 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. So I get to know the character of his love by that promise. Or Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. By his promises, I can know that he wants to deliver me and heal me. Jeremiah 17, 4 or Psalm 107, verse 20. I get to know what God desired of me through his promises. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So you see, something special happens when we know the measure of God for our lives. We begin to discover how much we have fallen in love with Jesus and then his measure becomes the basis of all our decisions in life. Amen.